Hello, my name is Leona Herzog. I'm the director and curator at the Bueller Gallery in St. Boniface Hospital. Today, I'm going to take you for a tour of our current show, which is called Language of Detail. It features the work of three artists, Christine Kirouac, Paul Robles, and Takashi Iwasaki. The show runs until April 24th. Please look at our website for more information, opening hours, and how you can attend. What do these artists have in common? Their work takes a great deal of time to do, and it's incredibly beautiful. And we all need a little bit of beauty in our lives at this time. They work in many mediums, including pencil crayon on paper, origami paper cut with a fine knife, embroidery thread, and acrylic paints on canvas. To start with, let's take a look at the work of Christine Kirouac. Christine Kirouac's work is firmly rooted in time and in place. In fact, it is the Castro neighborhood in San Francisco, a place where she spent a great deal of time, but never with a permanent address of her own. Each of her pieces is lush and rich and meticulously rendered in terms of shape, color, and quality of light. You will see that the image is purposefully placed on the paper to convey a sense of how the plant is growing and how it relates to the space it occupies. As in her piece, Diamond Street, which you see here, you'll notice that there's an awareness of the negative space, which places her subject matter on the paper in a way that often evokes a sense of reaching. Each image is isolated, taken out of its contextual landscape and placed in a new narrative. In another example, Seaward Street, Kirouac's practice is highly personal. It's her way of working through issues and by isolating the images on the paper, she is ensuring that we are only looking at what she wants us to see. We are not being distracted by other storefronts, traffic lights, vehicles, people, or even the sky. Although the images may appear hyper-realistic, this is not Kirouac's intent, nor is it a meditative process for her. Each drawing is charged with her extreme focus on the execution of the piece. It is a route to self-understanding, and when the drawing is done, she can let it go. The investment is complete. Many of her pieces involve drawing succulents and succulents are familiar to all of us. We see them in homes, public spaces, greenhouses, and botanical gardens. Viewers can easily overlay their own personal experience and let the work take them to a different place entirely, and that is just fine with Kerouac. Next, we're going to look at the work of Paul Robles. Robles' work is meticulous. Each cut he makes into the origami paper is done so with intent. The work deals with themes of intricacies, complexities, and how we use art to work through issues that ultimately create beauty. These works are part of a humor series that grew out of pieces he created in 2020. The first pieces resembled masks. You can see here that the mask is folded in half. The paper was cut on the fold and then opened up. He subtly altered each side of the image, creating not a twin, but rather a doppelganger. The faces in Robles' masks became reflections of our changing responses to the pandemic. His humor series grew out of that shared experience. The humoral theory was a system of medicine detailing the supposed makeup and workings of the human body adopted by Greek and Roman physicians and philosophers. Ancient Greek medicine was a compilation of theories and practices that intertwined the spiritual with the physical. Specifically, the Greeks believed health was affected by the humors, geographic location, social class, diet, trauma, beliefs, and mindset. These are all things that our current health system is still struggling with. Careful scrutiny of Robles' work rewards the viewer with a layered experience. The pieces are self-portraits, masks, as well as beautiful abstractions. Deeper observation reveals his personal lexicon of animals. In some works, he focuses on imagery from the Chinese zodiac. 
a traditional classification scheme based on the lunar calendar. Other symbols abound as well. Snakes, symbolic in various religions, can represent both sin and rebirth. A peacock alludes to pride and self-confidence. Koi reference good luck. And monkeys are Robo's version of the trickster. Other images abound as well, from rats to chrysanthemums. Airborne by Paul Robles is a paper sculpture consisting of 80 birds. Most of them are black and some of them are white. They're hand cut and the birds are formed into nestled groupings. This piece was created expressly for this exhibition. It is in memory of the passing of Robles' father at the age of 80, 10 years ago. Age 80 is, however, a guess. As a young man in Manila, he worked without much documentation and came to Canada in 1972 when his age was simply an estimate. The year 2021 was the 10 year anniversary of his father's passing, which the work commemorates, but it has become more. The title Airborne conjures a sense of freedom and taking flight to a new destination. Another direct response to how the pandemic has changed our collective psyche. Paul Robel's work is beautiful and at times cathartic, like the humors described in early medicine that required a delicate balance for health. Art can help us all rebalance as well. This is the work of Takashi Iwasaki. Iwasaki works in a variety of mediums as well, including acrylic, collage, wood, music, and of course, embroidery. His images are exuberant and buoyant, populated by all sorts of creatures doing all sorts of things. Many of Iwasaki's pieces are made with embroidery floss on canvas, employing a variety of threads and stitches, including fine surface weaving. He is engaged in an art practice that can be traced back over thousands of years and is practiced across the world. In the last 15 years, there has been a significant growth in the popularity of hand embroidery. Social media is allowing artists to share their work more extensively, and that has inspired more people to create with needle and thread. While isolating at home during the pandemic, time allowed for learning new skills and handwork of all kinds have enjoyed a renaissance. Contemporary embroidery artists also believe that hand embroidery has grown in popularity as a result of an increasing need for relaxation and digitally disconnecting practices. Iwasaki's canvases are populated by inventive shapes and creatures. They are amoebic in form, frequently friendly, and always colorful. The works are immaculately executed, whether in acrylic or in thread. His embroidered pieces take advantage of the full range of possibilities made available by his threads. They are used to flatten shapes and to create a sense of depth and fullness where needed to tell his stories. The energy in his work is emphasized even further with the discreet use of metallic threads to draw the eye across the canvas. This beautiful little piece illustrates many of the techniques that Iwasaki uses. We can see that he is employing thread to show flat areas of color, and he's also using thread to gently gradate from light to dark. This area, which looks like woven cloth, is actually embroidery thread that is woven right on the surface of the piece. I'll show you the back. You can see that each thread is knotted around the perimeter and the threads on the other side, the front of the piece, are woven to create the shape and the image. Each canvas is a world of Iwasaki's making, whether it is a recording of his daily life or whether it is showing us a world that is only visible in his mind. This is certainly the case with his wood sculptures. This tiny world incorporates a variety of materials, including horn, copper, crystals, glass, and various woods. It is completely possible that this small piece has momentarily left a much larger universe in order to spend some time with us. And to me, this is oddly comforting. I hope that you enjoy taking this tour of Language of Detail with me. The work of Christine Kerouac, Paul Robles, 
and Takashi Iwasaki has much in common. The work is meticulous and it takes a very long time to do. I hope that you can take some time to visit us in the Bueller Gallery in St. Boniface Hospital to enjoy this beautiful show.